Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. I fixed my camera, my screen. I'm now sitting so close to the harbor that Todd Schuler and Mark Miller could push me in or pull me out, depending on uh, which direction uh, things go here. Uh, big appreciation for all of our sponsors, including our friends at Royal Farms. I, you know, I talk about the coffee. I drink the coffee out of the coal roofing mug. Uh, I got to go get me a, a Royal Farms with like a little uh, a coffee mug with a handle on it, and I'll start drinking out of a Rofo mug around here. Also, the Western Fries, delicious, and to Essex. Our friends at Pizza John's, we've been talking crab cakes around here, and uh, Pizza John's is up the game on the crab cake. Now, I haven't had it yet. I'm going to hopefully get down and visit with uh, Todd and Mark sometime soon and pick up the new crab cake there. But they've told me to sing it out, and then I'm going to try it out when I get to Essex this week. If the snow clears and I can safely traverse uh, Essex and 702, Todd Schuler joins us now from deep in the heart of Essex, around the corner from Pat Ricks and Woody's. Uh, and just down the street from my original Taco Bell. Yo, Quiero, what's going on, brother? How are you? Well, you know, you're busting out all your swag, and I know you've been asking, but we got something for you here, too, ready to go. So when you're ready to pick up mm. with the new T-shirts, Mark Miller, whoa, popular whoa, whoa. What gray. Size is that? Let me see the size in there. Damngoodlawyer.com right like on the that. back. This is a this is a schmedium. I don't Shmedium. know if that's Is video. medium? Medium's good. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're gonna get you in there. We're gonna so when you come by, pick up your crab cake, pick up your t-shirt, maybe spend the day in Essex. Honey, we're going to Essex. All right, good. I just <laughs> told her. So she, if she's not on a conference call, she'll know. Um, you know, so many directions to go this week. And when I put stuff out at Baltimore Positive, and I was a little remiss last week, it was sort of a slowish week, and I'm working on a whole bunch of different projects here, including I told you the tickets and stuff, and I've moved my studio, as you can tell, right? I got a new background. I'm now sitting at the harbor or sitting at Oriole Park or, you know, wherever I, I need to be. But um, a, a couple of things. We, we spent so much time last week talking about food and Mardi Gras and local food that it, it started stirring up something that I began with Evan Brown on crab cakes. But I'm gonna, I, I'll get to that in a minute. But I'm doing something today, and I, and I haven't shared this with anybody yet, so I want to talk to you about this because this would really be pandemic-related. My wife made a pandemic shot appointment. She is going off for a month with her mom. She hadn't seen her mom in almost two years. Uh, her mom was battling cancer two years ago, last time she saw her. So my wife's going to go spend some quality time with her mom, safely, of course, working the whole deal. So before the pandemic happened, we made a family decision to get the global passport thing, right? The, the global, not the TSA, the global thing. And today's my day to like go and take my passport. And I'm thinking to myself, when am I ever going to use this? You know what I mean? Like, when I get this thing, when and where and will I be alive and will I be able to afford it? Is it going to be the Canadian border, like, doing a quickie into Toronto? I know it's not going to be Mexico because I can't do the water. I'd love for it to be Jamaica because I love Jamaica. I'd love for it to be, like, anywhere in Europe where we could see Niels, who saved my wife's life. Um, I'm convinced it's probably not going to be like Australia, Japan. I'm not going to be getting crazy out of the gate. I mean, out of the gate, it's going to be so. But, like, so I'm going to get this thing that for the first time, because you and I talk about American freedom so much, right, and talk about your law degree. Last week we talked about New Orleans and just going down and running around and eating king cake and fried shrimp and, like, all these things we took for granted. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have anything on my calendar. I don't have any con. I don't have any fun. I don't have any – but, like, I'm going to get this Willy Wonka ticket. Like, and you can I'm, go anywhere. Dude, I'm getting my pass the magic, out of the safe. The magic the carpet, I'm, right? And, and, <laughs> I'm, and I'm going to get the global, like, the thing where I just smile and say, Ness is here on the island. And they're like, come on in. Where it used to be you stood there in the sweaty Jamaican airport, you know, and they're singing, come back to Jamaica in the corner. You know, like, I did all of that. Now I'm just going to, like, walk in if I get this thing for 200 bucks or whatever it is and I can't even use it you know what I mean like yeah, so I don't this... even know when I'm gonna use it but I know like when I when I get it I'm gonna feel like some point I'm gonna stand under the Eiffel Tower I'm gonna I'm gonna see the northern light somewhere other than like on my zoom where I change my my background to that you know we're gonna get out there we're gonna get out there the scary thing is and, and I think there's, there you go. You the, like uh, 
Yeah, yeah, you can switch. That was quick. You got to dream a little uh, bit, man. You got you to like, dream, right? You're like, I dream a genie. You just uh, blink your eyes, and there you were, right? Master. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the scary part is the world is lagging us. So I honestly believe, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know if it's a morbid obsession or whatever, but I, I look at those COVID numbers, and I look at the vaccination numbers and the vaccination rate. It's like my – I check it every day, you know, like I want to see oh, that's where like we're going. Oh, that's like a stock market for you. It, it's like a stock market okay. check. Yeah, yeah, or like, you know, uh, box scores or whatever, you know. But uh, but the the world is lagging the United States. I mean, there, there, are, there are pieces of Europe. The U.K. is ahead well, we of the United States. We can afford to spend States. more on the vaccines. We're first in line sort of kind of, right? Well, I don't know how it works, but I'm sure that, yeah, American money and American... Uh, well, I saw Israel's uh, got, like, everybody done already because they're small, and they kind of... As my friend Julio said when we were, like, almost drunk but hung over in the Tokyo airport a year and a half ago, and people came off the plane, and we had to guess whether they were from the United States or from some other part, Julio looked at them and looks at them and says... They look like they got their shit together. They must be from Europe. <laughs> <laughs> well, not all of Europe is keeping up with the UK, you know. Uh, but you're right. Israel is is like out uh, smoking it. And then weird spots of the United States, like Alaska is all over it. You know, again, like maybe a low population thing, maybe just a really efficient distribution system. Maybe they got more than their line, you know, more than their share of the vaccine. Maybe Jared uh, took care of them because they were in an R state where like in San Diego, they got Petco Park open and they have no vaccines. Right, right. Because maybe. they're Californian. Why would we give be. them anything? It could be politics. Who knows? But it's going to be an uneven, I guess, is what I'm saying. By the time we're vaccinating. All, on the other hand, like Bermuda is right up there, you know, like they're ahead of the United States in terms of population. And See, I learned stuff when I have you on, Shuler. You're reading on the outside, man. I got an uncle down in Bermuda, you know, like I keep up on my, I, I try and hit that island once every five years or so. But, I got uh, Bascombe. That's all I got. And, and people tell me if I went to Bermuda with Bascombe, I'm good. Like that's, everybody in Bermuda knows Bascombe. So you'd be rocking. That's yeah, what I was so, told. Um, I, you know, if you know Uncle Hoot, you could, you're pretty good to know everybody there too. He's, uh, as my aunt described him, he was the first white guy on the island that everybody knew. You know, but uh, speaking of island and beaches and, and this global thing, that you know, my wife has explained to me if I ever really see the Northern Lights, they will not be from a beach. Yeah, yeah, that's the rub, right? Like. <laughs> We always want to do really exciting vacations, like you say, and see Europe. And my wife's family's from Ireland, and there would be this whole thing. But like, where have you been? Time, like, where, where have? Uh, give me some places you. I've been a lot of places, but I always love hearing places people have been. It sort of colors your life in a way. Like, and I and I mean this. And there's probably something Michener or some quoted, you know, author far greater than I, Hemingway or whatever. But travels like everything. And if I literally, literally, if you want a, a lawsuit from me, Mark Miller won a $10 million settlement from me, I would not live in a $9 million house. I would buy a nice place on the water down in Essex, and I would travel. You know what I mean? Like, literally, I would blow all of my money traveling. And as a 50-year-old oh, yeah. guy that's not, like, well off, I, I have blown most of my money chasing things like the northern lights like literally that's been the story of my life more than collecting things even though i've collected experiences the travel part and the world travel part is the thing i yearn to do the most and it's sort of the thing that keeps me going see i was just telling you like when the rubber meets the road and you got your two-week vacation or your one-week vacation and like what are we going to do what are we going to see what new experience are we going to have at the end of the day doesn't it always come back to yeah, why don't we go to the beach? The beach is always fun, you know, like, so, right. you know, we end up in the Outer Banks or, or Ocean City. And certainly, uh, my kids are 10 and 7. So when you ask me where I've been for the last 10 years, it's been the Outer Banks and Ocean City, you know, like, it doesn't get too far, you know, like, we don't, we don't go see the world uh, uh, as much as I guess I would like to. But, uh, but yeah, the beach becomes the easy play, you know, it's fun, it's lazy, you know, you get in those Europe trips and the next thing you know, you're going to the Louvre and then the Eiffel Tower and then you got to pack up and go to Italy the next day. Have you been it's to like, Paris? I have. I, okay, I've, so you've seen. I have seen the Eiffel Tower, I've okay. seen the Mona Lisa, uh, but, and I would love to go back. I got a good buddy uh, that is from the coast of France which he describes as the ocean city of France. He's been down to Ocean City with us. He thinks the water is terribly freezing. 
but um, but um, I would like to go with him. He's planning on going all summer. He hasn't seen his parents in a year, um, and you know, up and in taking the kids this summer. And maybe we could fly out for a week or ten days and, and stay with Pierre. I don't know. Probably not. You got the a cars. friend named Pierre in France. I love that. I got a friend named Pierre in France. Yeah, and he, I, well, he, he's he doesn't live in France. He lives in in uh, Jacksonville, Four Corners. But uh, but he's <laughs> as French as they get. He moved to the United States, and his brother lived in Montreal, and uh, he didn't want to do that. Like he he wanted to immerse himself in language, so he moved to Toronto so that they spoke English, and he was forced to learn. Uh, English. And as he described it, it only took one good drunk night to fully learn English. You know, once you once you've been messing around with it for a month and trying to learn it, you got to go out with your buddies and and really tie one on and then you can speak English the next day. All the Japanese guys say they learn it from watching Letterman, you know, when they come over <laughs> yeah, here, you know, yeah, no ba- back in the day, the baseball players. Todd Schuler is here, a damn good lawyer.com. I will have the shirt the second I get to Pizza John's and uh, you go uh, on a little Essex Hoot nanny here before the week is over and trying crab cakes. I- I've really been in the mood for like a really meaty Pizza John's pizza, a meaty one, like, you know, meat lover, meat eater, no mushroom, no green. And I love those things. Just That's what I'm going to do when I'm down in Essex. I brought that pepperoni and the cheese to you. I'm going to move for a cheese, a slice of cheese. I'm, 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 I'm missing that I didn't do that. So listen, I want to give you a Northern Lights story. So the only thing that the first thing I'm going to do is chase the Northern Lights. I'm pretty sure because I'm a little bit obsessed with it lately and I don't even really understand it all that much. One of the really cool parts of it, and this probably speaks to my personality, okay, is that it's not going to be easy, right? It's not you just go and they turn on, like getting on a right. ride at Disney World or something like that. By the way, I would love to go to Epcot with my son and, and his wife. They love Disney. We went to Disney and really loved it. I had a great day, and we want to go back. That was something we meant to do was go to Epcot when some cool band was playing, you, you know, the shed, Lou Graham's playing the shed or, you know, with something, right? The Bodines or whatever. So there's a couple of those little things like that. And then, of course, like getting to Europe to visit, you know, Jen's donor, who we missed his wedding. We missed the second wedding. You know, we've missed all this stuff in his life. The Maybe last line it up years. for the third. What's that? Line it up for the they third wedding? They do two weddings in Germany. They do oh, like okay. A, a, <laughs> all a, right. A, a, Most of my friends do two or three, They're too. They're German, You know, dude. like, no big you deal, know? you know? I've but only that. done one ceremony. When I, only, <laughs> that's the plan at this point. So, so a couple years ago, my wife and I did a, a Tony Robbins retreat, right? It was right after the, um, right after the, the Caps won the Cup, because I saw Tony Robbins. So we went to Florida. We do this thing, and... It's a seven-day all-in. It's a thing called Date with Destiny. You can look it up. There's a really good uh, movie, two-hour movie made by a guy named Joe Berlinger who did my favorite TV series of all time called Iconoclasts. By the way, very much shot like the Barack Obama Springsteen thing that they just announced this week, the podcast thing, where two sort of creators sit and talk about things. So this Robbins thing is, you know, it's an all-in immersive experience. And you have to pair off with someone that you don't know. You, you spend the first day with your spouse or whatever. Then you need to meet a stranger, you know, and, and work on making life better. And, and honestly, the reason you're here and Baltimore Positive is here is because I did this two years ago now, two years ago and two months, okay? So we're, we're at this event, and my wife winds up pairing off with this, this European guy. I wind up pairing off with a dude from L.A., a Korean background dude, uh, great, great guy, you know, still friends in the phone, you know, you make friends at these events. So she meets this dude and he's from Norway, right? So at the end of the first night, I'm like, Hey, how are you? His name's Jan. I say hello. He's English. Perfect. You know, like all European people. And I once had a Norwegian girlfriend and I once had a Swedish girlfriend. So I know how to say like the dirty words in Nor- Norwegian. You know what I mean? I know how to say really funny off color things. That's great. That yeah. That'll get, you, that'll get you through. Perfect. So, I said to him, where are you from? And he tells me, like, where he's from. He's like, oh, I'm from the north, you know, up by the Arctic Circle. I'm doing a pretty good yawn. Not bad. I I don't want to be disrespectful to him. So I I said to him, man, the Northern Lights is like one of the – like, my wife wants to do safari in Africa. Like, that's her thing, and that's Niels' thing. So at some point, they're going to do that together. Right. I mean, we figured this out that whenever we do it. And to your point, if Africa doesn't catch up and we don't get shots and they don't get shots, we could be eight years 
get into Africa on a safari. Like, legitimately, right? Yeah, for sure. So that's why this – I'm a little obsessed with this passport because I know what it represents. Like, when I hold the three or four passports I've had in my life, they represent, like, this thing was in the safe with me in China. This was with me in Argentina. This was with me in Australia, in New Zealand, in Japan, Korea. Yeah, my mom loves those stamps on her passport. Mom, know, I have, like, every I stamp's people. a memory, right? You know, right? My, you know I, I, I shared a Brady Anderson. Did you see that Brady Anderson picture I shared the other day? Was that him at the plate and then with uh, Castro, Castro and, and Angelo? Right, right. All yeah, yeah. with like this poop-eating grin. Yeah. On face. <laughs> so this guy says to me, uh, I, I said to him, got to know him a little bit because it was the end of the night. And these are all in immersive experiences. You don't sit and have a drink. But I was sitting at Rocco's Tacos in West Palm Beach with him. And, and I had my phone out and we we're kind of like having a drink. And I said to him, hey, man, have you ever seen the Northern Lights? And he said to me, he said, my friend, this would be like me asking you if you have ever seen the moon. Nice, nice. Yeah, and we got to like, go out and see. Yeah. Well, where are you, dude? I need to stay at your place, right? So we stayed in touch. He's a wonderful guy. And maybe at some point he'll see this segment. But, dude, I want to take you in. I'm going to share this with you, a Google map, because I want to show you where this guy's from. And he posts pictures all the time. He's my Facebook friend now. So you mentioned your friend in France, right? So right. you mentioned these well, experiences you my have friend like, in a passport, right? Long Green Valley, yeah, but so, he's so, from France. <laughs> yeah. So can, you can see where we are on the map here? Yeah. Okay, so, so you can see me zone in on where Greenland is, right? Sure. And where, like, Norway is in Iceland. I've been to Iceland several times because I always took the cheap airfare through Iceland. I've never really been to, like, the spas or the rake. I've never been off, you know, off the airport there. When you land in Iceland, it's like landing on the lunar surface. It's bizarre. So this is Norway. This guy tells me where he's from, and he's like, you have to look up this town called Bodo, like this, this little town here, and then you just keep going further north from this. And he lives on, like, these fjords up in this area up in here. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm not sure I'm in, you know. So, After all so, this snow this year, I'm out. So what I'm telling you is, and this is, you know, he puts these pictures up of the northern lights off of these ice services. Right, and right. And they eat fish and, like, it's this little village. Like, if, if I zone in on what life looks like in this town, you're going to want to go. So I'm, yeah, I'm, what the I'm heck? I'll zoom check in. it out. Like, dude, <laughs> dude let, me, let me zoom in right now. I'm going to get you to do this with me, okay? I got to start recruiting some people, all right? Are you watching what's going on in I'm, this town? I'm on Bodo here, can, yeah. Can I see, see the mountains town? behind the town. I, mean, I see the harbor. This, you don't want to eat fish in this village. I'm in. Now, what's wrong with you? What do they? Uh, what do we drink with our fish in it? They a have like beer like, there. Cold regular beer. From beer. What I get. All right, all right. That's ice that's, cold beer. Yeah, I got it. You can keep that in the garage year round. You know, you don't have to switch to coolers. I once went to Norway with my buddy Scotty P. I mean, Goodness. went to Lillehammer, and we were in Lillehammer when the Nagano Olympics were happening. Okay, so we're in. Norway, and we're in Sweden. We flew to Oslo. It had to do with Springsteen. It's a long story. And we, we were in a, a hotel, a nice hotel in, in Lillehammer, and we decided to go cross-country skiing because we were watching it on TV. Looks easy when they do it. No, Careful. no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I'll mutombo you all day. <laughs> Man, Cross, we went out. We did it. I have pictures. Like, I, I would show you me putting the skis on. And I went, I don't even want to say 100 yards. We talked about how far I walked last week in the cold with Mardi Gras. Um, you know, I put them on, and we paid the 50 bucks or whatever. We did our little turn, took some pictures. But it was not a, a skill we were going to learn that afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. Wasn't it wasn't a one day. I mean, do you boogie board at the beach? Do you, did you learn uh, to surf? Do you, you know, I – I've done a little of all of that. I had a surfboard in my Mobile, Alabama days, surfing the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and actually, so we you do know how to surf. Well, come on, I'm 44 years old now, and you know, I, I've got up on a board this summer. You know, my we've been uh, in Ocean City and in Outer Banks. There's great like surf lessons are av available for the kids. 
And so we take the kids and, and we get them on boards and then you can rent boards as well and just kind of have them around. So yeah, you try and get up, but you know, 45 years old, 250 pounds, you know, like it's a tough surfing right out there, you know? I took my, my kid looks good to, to Hawaii a year and a half ago. The last trip we really went on, which is Hawaii's America, but it doesn't feel like America. And it just feels like the best of America. <laughs> right, right. And I can't believe that, um, you know what I need to do? I, I need to change my zoom setting right now. We need to go from the Northern lights because we need to warm up. If we're going to have this conversation a little bit, here we go. So, um, Aloha. Is that better? Okay. Aloha. So my wife had never surfed. And I had a surf lesson. Uh, I had two surf lessons in California. One Bobby Bethard set up for me with his guy in San Diego. Great Bobby Bethard was wonderful to me. Uh, and another one in LA in, um, in Santa Monica. I did get up once on like a foam board. My son is a surfer. My son lived in Ocean City for years and surfs. My wife had never surfed. And we went to Hawaii. And she wanted a lesson. It was her bucket list thing, which she wanted to do. She realized it was going to be very, very difficult to, like, actually do it. Like, going out there and paddling and sort of learning and flipping and flopping and, sure, you know, sure. making a funny video. Dude, she went out there, like, Gidget, and she swam out against, like, a pretty nice little tide. She flopped. She flopped. She tried again. She wasn't going to quit because she's beaten cancer twice. And she got up on the board, dude, and I held the camera, and she surfed a 40 second, like ride in, you know, just like ride in like that, just like that on the, so, you know, these dreams you have and these crazy things, all of these things require a vaccine, Todd Schuler. They do. Yeah, right? they do. They do. Uh, but you're right. It's awesome. I, I live vicariously through my children and to watch them get up same exact experience, you know, like they got these guys, they'll, they'll have the guy, the instructor will pull them out. So you, you know, the, you know, seven year old arms don't have to, you know, paddle through. But they're pulled out Kids and they're getting started. Man. You can teach them how to ski, teach them how to do anything, right? Yeah, it's really remarkable. Like, again, skiing, I can ski. I guess those words just came uh, out of my mouth, but it's like I'm, a whole I'm new learn. I'm myself at this point. I, I and a whole need, weekend. I, I spent a whole weekend bruising up and then I'll have a good run there at the end, you know? Like, I, I've but, never been to Cumberland. I have never been to Oakland, although I do see. Oakland, Maryland. Yeah, I've never sure. been to Deep Creek Lake. I've had friends offer me their cabin and this and that. I've just never done it. I had friends that were there out that way last week. And, like, I'm, I'm at the point where I would, I'm not going to golf, okay? And I'm not going to ski. What's but wrong I with golf? It's lot, nice and easy. You don't get hurt. Drinks, you know? Yeah, no, it's awesome. I, we, we go President's Day with a crew, and actually we're, we're supposed to book this week. Uh, because it just was President's Day, and we know we're going to have our vaccines by this time. But, you know, one of those four or five family houses, you know, the big, you know. Fit, Perfect, fit like Nags Head houses, right? Like Nags Head houses in the mountains, and you can ski if you want to, and none of our crew. And it crew has a fireplace and, like, all the that. the fireplace, and, and none of our crew are legit skiers. Like, half the crew will never go skiing the entire weekend, maybe go tubing with the, you know, littler kids or whatever. And if there's the snow, other half throw might a snowball, go out. that's fun. The, build a yeah, fort. Build, you do build that, a right. fort, snowball fights, whatever, but mostly just kind of be in the mountains and watch the snow come then down. Then I just showed and, you Norway and the Northern Lights and you urinated upon it. Well, you know, I didn't urinate upon it. I was just, we also, and you're, you're talking on the about same mat the was Pierre's house. Your ass off. What difference <laughs> you're not going to see the Northern Lights. I'm done with winter for this year but i got a book next year's winner ahead of time so we don't lose the big house at wisp i'm gonna plug brian granick right now visionary eye because he has a really cool look i use these to clean my glasses and he keeps my vision great so if you know brian give him some love but uh so th this keeps me beachy and this thing i now i'm having all sorts of fun with it i've become dangerous with the zoom yeah, I'm, background i'm One stuck episode, in the right? office yeah i've lost it i wanted to get that cat though can you get the cat from the lawyer video do you remember that that was like the greatest meme two weeks ago the lawyer down in, there was a lawyer down in Texas who couldn't get off of a cat filter. Oh, he I sound, remember that. Sounded like yeah, Hank yeah, Hill, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, it was pretty good stuff. A lot of I things tried to get that for my Zoom meeting. Yeah. It's best Can to just get out of Texas. Can I ask you as a legal a guy beach. that live, and I know you have some friends in Texas, um, what you make of that? I mean, you're a former delegate. Now, you know, I can, we've been sitting here dreaming about our next vacation or whatever, and uh, yeah, I don't even know how we, we meander into these. We haven't talked about food yet, which is incredible. Uh, I got to give you the crab cake story. 
But you witnessing all of this as a legal mind, as a political mind, as if the state of Maryland just allowed BG&E and three others to come in and just sort of hijack everybody's energy and say, oh, it's 98 and humid today. Yeah, 100 bucks today if you want the air conditioner to work. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't – and I talk to Moeller about this, and my conservative friends and the people I get sideways with and get pissed off and all of that and cancel sponsors, all that stuff, right? Um, they, they, you know, they talk about freedoms. There is a point here where the reason this country's worked for 250 years is because government sits at this level to try to protect our people and keep us safe. And the minute we lose touch of that when these Parkland murders happen and when these murders happen out in the field in Las Vegas out of the Mandalay Bay that probably you and I have stayed at at various points, I know I have, um, you see these things happen, and, and then you see these people and companies take advantage of a, of a freeze, of, you know, a ge- once in a generation freeze that my cousins, my brother, my family, my friends down in Texas, all over my Facebook, their pipes are frozen. You know, my poor cousin in Katy, Texas. I, 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 you know, government has to be better than this, Todd. Government has to at least have a role, I, I would think. And, and the notion that people get elected under the banner that government doesn't work and then spend their time in office trying to dismantle government is slightly off-putting to me. Um, and if that, you hate government, why am I voting for you, man? Like, what, well, that, what, what, that's what, what it, well, and look, there is a philosophy that says that government out of the way is the best government, but government out of the way is not blowing power grids like that that is government not having a role in your electrical system and it has a role i'm sure it has a role in delivery i'm sure it has a role in the creation of infrastructure right government dollars are going into the texas power lines and the texas power generators but government's not allowed to have a role in saying hey guys you got to have backup uh this much backup power you have to be tied in here you have to Dude, do this how about what happened in 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 uh, in, uh where which was, was it not left I'm, i want to get the wrong city um the, the explosion over in the middle east oh it was in uh, libya right it was in uh, no it was in libya i want to get the right i i, I, I don't want to misspeak um Keep going. I'll, I'll, but route, what I'm talking right? about is that sort of thing that when government, the, the fireworks facility that blew up in Texas, right? Like these, these explosions, not, you know, meat packing plants that are COVID hubs in South Dakota, you know, like at some point regulation is serves all of us, man, you know? Yeah. I think that there's a role and, and, Look, you know, it's fire departments, it's police departments. It's I want to say Beirut. I want to be right school. about that. It was Go Beirut. Ahead. Thank you. Uh, but um, yeah, roads and, you know, like there, there is a wonderful role for private industry uh, and, and we can credit American success as much to private ingenuity as we can to public investment. But if neither of those things, if either of those things is frozen out, you're, you're, you're on your way to a third world country, you know, like you have to have a vibrant public interest and you have to have a vibrant, vibrant, you know, private uh, investment that, that can, you know, do what it does, you know. I'm not a conspiracy theorist about the Russians. I mean, I believe what I, I, I have been, that has been proven to be truthful about their involvement in all sorts of things, right? Uh, you know, in ripping off the government and, and uh, backgrounds and who they are and all of that. But, you know, as it comes to this, when one thing leads to another and, the, you know, down the line, that the, I always thought the Russians pulling a power grid on a really hot or a really cold day would be, and you know, the ultimate act of warfare, right? Like, you know, talk about bombs and well, yeah, any attack on and, yeah, like, any attack on infrastructure. Acts of war sure. that we know to be acts of war. What's going on in Syria? And by the way, you said Libya. We meant Lebanon, and it was, and I, I, I was going to say Syria, but I knew it was near there. Proven how smart like, we are, Bond right? To Beirut. So anyway. 
Geography, apparently not good at Calvert Hall or Dundalk. No, it's SA. No, no, no. I'm great with geography. That's why, that's why we got into the global map thing here. So um, maybe I can get a, a Sharpie out and draw the hurricane going into Alabama. For, there you go. Right, but right. nonetheless, I, back to where we were. I've always felt like the Russians pulling a grid would, on the whole country or a big quadrant of the country, were like, Everything would stop. Like all the red lights stop, all the commerce stops. We can't make any money. The computers don't work. The phones don't work. Like that would be, you know, a panic that like we would sense from 9 11. Remember after 9 11, there was like a blackout in New York. People had to walk across bridges and they couldn't communicate. Yeah, that turned into like a glorious night, though. Everybody came together. Yeah, I think it was a matter of a, a few hours. But yeah, listen, infrastructure so I, but, but in I, general. But I, what I want to say is when the grid went out in texas because of the freeze the things that happened there because of freezing pipes bursting you know really water gets contaminated and now they don't have safe drinking water dysentery where do we go to the bathroom how do we get fresh water we are we flint michigan how do we repair it is it really repaired out here in west texas uh so I mean, the, the unintended consequences of that. Because I could sit here and I joke with my wife all the time when the lights flicker. I'm like, oh, the Russians are going to hit the power grid. And I, I don't mean that to even be flipping or half-assed. I believe it's certainly that would be the way you would want to wage war at this point. It's a lot cheaper than sending your people over with guns. But I, but I think seeing the Texas thing, I, I never even thought like, well, it's going to get a little cold around here, y'all, and the, the, the Green New Deal, no, and the, no, we're going, you know, and then things are going to freeze, and then the then the pops are going to freeze, and and then I'm like, how the hell are they going to clean this up? Yeah, it's a big giant mess, and I, I so my septic main leaving my house went up. It's done it a couple of times. I really got to get it replaced. But you need our friends at Liberty Pure, Liberty Pure Solutions. So there you go. They're right down the road too. When it when that happens. Like when it happened a few weeks ago, it's paralyzing. And all it is, is I can't use water in my house now, right? I can't flush toilets. I can't take a shower. I can't rinse dishes. Sometimes I choose to not take a shower now. That's how much I take it for granted at this point, you know? Well, yeah, but that happened to me. I in Venezuela, and I remember, and this is in the late 80s, uh, and, my dad, and my dad had a nice apartment. I mean, you know, safe as Venezuela could be at the time or whatever, right? But, you know, the water only was on from 6 to 8 in the morning, and you had to fill up a bucket. And well, grandmom had to live, boil water out of that. And when I needed the afitar, you know, to shave, I, you know, grandmom boiled me water and said, no, 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 we don't flush the toilet. We have to pee three or four times before we flush. You know, like, I live that way. And I, you're talking about living in a cabin up in the woods. and I, I know, spent eight hours whatever, right? unable to rinse my dishes, and you'd have thought I was dying, you know? Like, it was miserable for me, you know? And now, to, let's say they don't fix Texas. Imagine all the Texans, like, it's impossible to fix the in infrastructure now. And all the Texans just get in their cars and just start driving Arkansas and Oklahoma and stuff, right? Like, what what's there, you know? Like, going back to the overall, we need to fix things. We need to be a community. We need to be a country. And we need to be a state. And we need to be a local government. I want those my plumbing work. to be too good. I want my Absolutely. electric and my Wi-Fi to be too good. I, I and my wife and I have been driving around the city. If they're going to fix anything in this city, they need to start with the potholes, right? Like, just start with that, right? Like, I, I, it really is amazing infrastructure week. I remember back when the uh, the former guy um, had infrastructure week. You know, like th these, th th this we need to take a hard look at this man. And this Texas thing is an effing disaster that in the 21st century, in the richest country in the history of the world, where we're great, I'm going to tell you how great we are down here in Texas, um, it, it's disgraceful. It's, it's, well, it's it an is. embarrassment that you can't just point at. It's an embarrassment that is a, an overall concept that needs that's going to take a couple of decades to probably bury out from underneath because it's going to freeze again there, right? Well, yeah, but let's give as good as we as we uh, or get as good as we give, Mr. Mayor. Like, isn't our town, our beautiful town behind us, you know, a sort of slow moving train of decaying infrastructure for the last 20 years, too? Uh, you know, yes. like, don't we have things falling apart? We have, uh, uh, you know, the buried Jones Falls feeding the harbor with garbage. And we have a well, so we far, the Russians haven't hit the grid here, though. 
that no, hasn't happened yet. I got you, but you know, there. What do we do to fix Baltimore? You know, what what do we do? Uh, you know, uh, we we have a fleeing tax base. We have a, uh, you know, we've got our problems too. You well, know, Hogan brought like, that stuff up about Maryland, right? Like everybody leaving the state. I've I've had some partners recently who've claimed citizenship elsewhere to avoid estate taxes because, like, why would you do that to your kids? Why would you die here and screw your family out of a whole bunch of money? Why would you do that? My kids will be fine. Are you kidding me? I'm going to, they're going to learn well, how to work. They're going to be fine because we're probably going to the law by the time you get around to dying, Todd. Hopefully it's <laughs> da, da, da. Right? I'm actually, one of my, uh, one of my most hippie concepts is I'm like a hundred percent of state tax. Like just pull all that generational money out of there and like, you know, let everybody start fresh, you know, but. Uh, wow. That's, that's left. Yeah. It's a little left, but I mean, why are we taxing income? Right. Why are we taxing, um, um, you know, uh, why are there sales taxes and income taxes and corporate taxes? Why don't we just, when you die, your money just kind of goes into the pot and we give everybody, you know, 48 grand on their 18th birthday or whatever we've got. I don't know. Uh, well, there are people who handle that, right? You know, and, and protect that. But apparently it's easier to protect in, let's say, Florida than it is in Maryland, right? Like that if you have yeah. worked your whole life and have something to give, you know, like <laughs> the kids might want it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fine. But who the hell are my kids just because their dad's a lawyer? You know, like there's all kinds of kids that would want it, aren't there? <laughs> you know, like why do they get I bet now they'll have every advantage of their, you know, they'll have every advantage, right? Uh, they go go to the best schools. They live in a great neighborhood. Everything will be great for them. Eat crawfish be on practice up. day. Yeah, they're going to go to college and they're going to, you know, like they're set up. Like they don't need my money when I go, right? I I'll ask them later. It all. Let's get yeah. their opinion on this. Hey, like the Carnegies and people like that, the, the robber barons of the turn of the century, they all gave their money away. They weren't, they weren't sending it off to kids. It's one of the reasons I don't walk in Walmart often, once a year maybe for something. Oh, I you love know. Walmart. Are you crazy? No, I'm out. I used to be out on like a you've killed Main Street sort of political anti thing. And then That's I went I back am. after like 10 years. I'm like, this is the greatest place on earth. It really, I missed out on the excitement of walking into Walmart. And it, it's really cool. If you can, uh, if you can I'm get going anti Walmart. I'm going to go local here with you on this because I have a concept and I'm going to run it by you. Um, I think it's one of the, the, the interesting little things I've come up with at this point in my life because like, you know, we've talked baseball and basketball and football and all that stuff. The common denominator for me during the plague has been eating, right, in this city here because I never leave Baltimore anymore, right? So I, I don't – I haven't had anything from New York to eat in a year. I keep talking about going down to D.C. to Philomena and bringing home a bunch of desserts or something, making a run for it. I told Jack, Jack Del Rio, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd meet there and take carryout bags, uh, sit in Georgetown and eat. Um, I haven't done any of that. I've literally just been here – Dining here, you and I, you went through a whole laundry list of places that I need to eat and things I need to eat. I had Evan Brown on this week, and I've been talking to my wife, been talking to Peter, my partner, about this. Also had some local meetings with some, some beer people over at Guinness and some other places. And I think what I'm going to do, and I'm going to employ this pretty soon, in the next month, I'm going to roll this out. Let's say by opening day. I'm going to one day a week, every week, the way I came and visited you and Mark Miller down in Essex uh, last week, I'm going to set a day aside, an afternoon, evening, where I'm going to go somewhere that I've never been. Now, in the beginning, I'm going to start with my sponsors and the people who support me and, and sort of the you know, surrounding area to that. And I'm going to eat a crab cake. I'm going to drink a beer. And I'm going to try something or some things on the menu that aren't like a typical French fry, something that I can only get there or something they consider a house specialty or something they do. But everyone that has a crab cake, they brag about. And I'm figuring you and me right now, if we played like word association, like literally, if I said Fadley's, you'd say Costas. If I said Jimmy's, you'd say Pappas. If I, so we would do all right. that. There's right? about a dozen that, right? places that count as a dozen places that deserve the title best crab cake Dude, in your neighborhood. I can give you Al's Schultz's. I mean, I just go down the, the, the block pizza. John's now as a crab cake. They're bragging about that. They want me to brag about that. They they're saying right, people right. will eat that. This is a legitimate crab cake. And this is what we're going to do now. Not everybody and, counts. Like everybody that you've mentioned 
people are allowed to include as their best. You know. But listen, you can throw in, you know, Cocos, every G&M. You still haven't mentioned my favorite Go through G&M, all of them, right? right? But so Fox I'm Hill. figuring over the next five years of my life, okay, I'm 52, okay? Over the next five years of my life, and look, you and Mark will be a part of this because we're going to get a shot, we're going to get a mask. I'm going to go out with sponsors, friends, celebrities. Maybe even at some point it grows into something where, like, it becomes something where 50 of us go have a crab cake. A roving it, crab cake. We, you know, we'll have a conversation. You know what I mean? So what I'm going to do is, and, and here's what, this all was birthed from me having crab cake sponsors, right? Uh, like Brandon Scott comes on and pimps Coco's, right? And, and you know, I know Carmel. I, I, li- listen, I, I, I've had all these crab cakes in all these places, halls, right. all these places, right? So Fadley's is my dear sponsor. Costas has been my sponsor for 20 years. So I'm going to go there and start it there. But even they're going to say, you know what? My crab cake's a little on the mustardy side because that's the way we do it. Ours is a little on the Old Bay sure. side because that's what we do it. We only do lump. We only do Maryland. This is we use cracker filler. We don't use crab. We use bread crumb. We use uh, parsley. Well, we don't do parsley. We we do lemon with ours. Well, we do crackers and we do uh, you know and regular size mustard. Size fluctuates too, like you know the big softballs with the gooey insides versus the little guys that are nice and right. Tell me consistent. what makes a perfect crab cake for you. What's your crab cake, Todd Schuller? Well, so I, I mean, you want uncle Joe's recipe or do you want me to just send you to Coco's? I mean, you know, like, Oh, that's what it is. Okay. So my, Coco's, no, recipe Co- Coco's is my, well, Coco's is my go out and eat. And then Maggie Phelps is my friend who makes the best crab cakes. But and then are uncle they the same Joe's. No, nah, they vary. Uh, Maggie's is a little more sloppier, if you will. Like Coco's is that perfect round, almost softball. Maggie's kind of has the lumps kind of coming out a little bit. A little wetter, more wet, uh, moist. Uh, well, I think Coco's would be more, Coco's has the inner core that is. My my brother doesn't Coco's like Coco's. Fried or broiled? Instance. What is it? Broiled, but it's uh, it's so big that it it's a separate consistency on the outside than the inside a little bit. You know, it gets like the real gooey in the middle do you like more mustard or mayo what do you prefer well uh it's it's tough i mean i like but but i like them all i'm making them yeah yeah. just like me because like people say well what do you like better fadley's or costas or and i'm like fadley's is a little more mustard based costas is a little bit more of an old bay a little bit more of a salt kick to it although there's some celery seed in both i like for me I love celery. I love the flavor of the celery seed, but I like it all. Like I mentioned to Evan Worcestershire. Said, no Worcestershire in my crab cake. No parsley in my crab cake. We don't fry our crab cakes. We only broil them. Uh, you know, the pimento, oh, we don't put pepper in our – like everybody's got a thing, and, I'm, and here's where I am. I like all of them. I mean, I yeah, really do. Yeah. Like, I, I, so this is where I'm going to be not so nasty, Nestor, or whatever, Switzerland, but, like, I really want to try – and really sit and analyze what makes one taste different than the other. And, and, and I've gone off the track here. And maybe you're a Calvert Hall guy, you're East Side guy. If I said Angelina's to you, do you understand? Oh, absolutely. Mean, but, I mean, yeah, I, Angelina's on Hartford Road, right? See, that was always my favorite crab cake for much of my life go-to. because it was yeah. a special occasion. We, we rarely went there to eat. But that was more of a sweet crab cake. Like, that is none of the above. It wasn't mustardy. It wasn't right, right. obey. It, it maybe a little celery, maybe a little parsley in a way I wouldn't. But, like, and it was more like flat top fried, which I prefer fried crab cake. I always prefer fried to, to bro- But if I go to Coco's, I'm going to order it the way they serve it. That's, if yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna do bring this it to me the way I'm that you say – you say you have the best crab cake. Bring it to me the way you. Yeah, I'm not gonna try and customize a Fadley's crab cake. You know, I want what you got. First, you got to get your list down, right? We got to get the list of. Is it 15? Is it 20 spots that are like officially bragged on their crab cake, right? No, no, no. I'm gonna go to 250, dude. I'm gonna do this for five as, years of your I, life. I'm gonna do this for the next five years because what's gonna happen is, and I I talked to Muller about this. He has a place down at Kent Island, right? And Peter's mother's best friend is the manager, Holy fisherman shit. down there, right? We're allowed so to cross the bridge. You and I are going to be in Ocean City, and that big crab cake joint that serves the softballs up on 100th Street, wherever it was, a crab cake factory. Crab it's cake factory, yep. Right? I've never had a crab cake there. I've never, oh, never yeah. had a crab cake. Great crab cake. Okay, so I'm going to be able to do this 
We're not even, you know, forget Rehoboth or Delaware. I mean, just the state of Maryland. Don't forget them. Hold on. Let's think about this. Somebody in Frederick's bragging. Somebody in Havana Grace is bragging. I assure you there are five places in Hartford County bragging right now about their this and that, whatever. So I'm going to make this an endeavor to meet new people, okay, to go places I haven't gone to take people like you, because I'm not going to get you to bow Norway, obviously. You, you, you yeah, it seems that. a little easier for me to do on the crab cake You know, tour. I mean, let me pull it up again. I mean, right here, let me pull it up again. You sure you don't want to go? Look at that port, dude. It looks lovely. It almost looks like they could figure out a crab cake in Look a at that, like man. That. They have planes there for you, right? They have a library. Look, look, come on. You don't want to stand on the, on the black sands of Looks like Northern. penguins could be there. So if you can't do that, you can have a crab cake with me in Middle River. Okay? That's fair, right? That I can pull off. I don't when even need I my do passport the for that. John's crab cake officially because they have, that's going to be the third stop, right? It's got to be, are you going to do like the crab cake log? I mean, this is going to be a whole spot on the website, right? This We're going to have. A thing. This is We're going to have a list, you know, you're going to have, you're going to have your review, if you will. You're going to talk to the, to the, to the folks that work it's there. It's going to be a Guy Fieri episode. We're going to go in. We're going to talk about things. We're going to talk about food. We're going to talk about the neighborhood. We're going to talk about the restaurant. We're going to talk about the beer I'm drinking. We're going to talk we about get besides the crab and, cake. And, you know, what's, what's your what appetizer, you what's your cake, side dish? Right? Yeah. Right. I'm Fair in. enough. Yeah. Let's hook it up. You like it? Yeah. All right, good. If I don't, uh, Johnny, you picture behind you. It's not in the camera right now. G give me the story on that because I've been asking about that, and I want to clear that up before we go today. Mark Miller gave me this for Christmas, uh, and it is, I think, him after the 24-20 victory over the Chicago Bears, November 15th, and it's undated. It looks like about mid, mid Johnny, right? Mid sixties, Johnny. That's a legitimately say. cropped photo from a newspaper from yeah, the UPI. I used to pull those pictures out of the machine in 1984 when I was at the News American. He looks like he got a pretty good bloody nose on that one. Though, it's right? called a V-Lox. Is what we used to call them at the paper. I'm not going to successfully. Oh man, the no look. Hey, uh, nice. Yeah. So Mark Miller gave me that for Christmas one year. You know, Johnny never did the show with me. Um, no. Johnny came on with other hosts at NST during the course of time. And like, I was always a little intimidated by John, you know, and he always stood on the sidelines and I was always down there. And I'll try to tell you the story without tearing up, but, and I'll try to make it quick, but the team came in 96. I used to see Mr. Unitas at Towson basketball games back when, uh, back when Mark's friend, Mike Butts played for Bucknell. We would go out to see Towson. Back in the days of, of my dear, dear friend, Terry Truax, one of my all-time favorite human beings, uh, I still have Wooden's Pyramid that Terry Truax gave me, which I keep very, very close to my passport, literally. It's in my safe. That's how important it is to me. So, um, Unitas was always around, and nobody bothered John much on the sidelines. He always had that coat on or whatever, 96, 97, 98, 99. And... I have one picture with John that I took at the last day Memorial Stadium uh, against the Oilers. If you remember, I was that, there. I was at that game. Right. So I have one picture ever with John Unitas, and that's it. I'm wearing a dunce cap, and he has his Johnny. He has a number 19 jersey on from that day. So it was awesome. So it's a neat picture, but he never did the show, and I never asked him because I didn't think he wanted to. Yeah, I didn't want to get turned down or drag him out because he didn't seem like he wanted to. You know, he, he just didn't seem like he wanted to. So. I never asked him to come to the barn. He never said no. I just never asked. So, right, they, right. you know, I mean, Art Donovan came, hey, what time you want me out there? Yeah. Make sure you have spam. So, um, the last time I saw Johnny alive, I was on the field at a preseason game a couple weeks before he died. So, it was August of whatever, 01. Redmond was running around 01, 02, whatever year that was. I think it was 02. Um, and I was on the sideline, and I would have told you that John Unitas didn't know who I was. Like, I just would have told you. Like, And he saw me. He was standing on his, the 19-yard line or wherever he stood on that, I guess, the southwest side of the stadium, which was the Ravens' sideline. Right, and right. I always had a pass to be down there the last five minutes. And I was probably down there chasing Billick around or getting a guest for the show that week or whatever because it was late preseason, third preseason game or whatever. And I saw him down on the field, and he, he looked at me and said, hey, Nestor, how are you? 
And I'm like, but Johnny Unitas knows my name. It's fantastic, right? And, and, and then he died. And I remembered that, like, a couple weeks later when he died, I'm like, because I, I was taken aback that he knew my name. So, you yeah. know, like, to me, that well, was, he was a like, cool, humble guy that way. He had a kid uh, a couple years behind me at Calvert Hall. And like oh, you said, Chad? he'd go to the back. Yeah, Chad yeah, was I know probably, Chad well, you know, but I, never I don't know, really knew two Chad. or three years younger. I, yeah, uh, but he was right. Uh, Johnny, like you said, at Towson games, like he'd come watch Chad play JV basketball and sit on the bench there. Nobody would mess with him, you know, like nobody go over and like, you know, he mobbed like today, you know. If it was Alex Rodriguez, there'd be a thousand people. People would be like, You got two Johnnies up. behind you, man. Look at you. you you're, you're Johnnied up. Yeah, I'm Johnny. I got Johnny all you over the office. You got Johnny O, too. You get a lot of Johnny. Yeah, I got you Johnny got John o. Lennon, too. Johnny O, Johnny U, and Johnny Lennon, yeah. So All the big Johns. Uh, all right. Yeah, 66, uh, you know, Orioles. BP, John uh, Powell. Boog Powell. Yeah, John Boog Powell. There you go. So, absolutely. All right, dude. Well, all hang right. it. Tell everybody what you do. And, and like, because you did it such a great job last week of explaining, like, you, like, you texted me earlier, and I thought, eh, you know, I hope you're the red light or whatever. And I'm thinking, like, and I sent back, drive safely, and I'm like, oh, I'm telling a, you know, accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're drive probably safely. right that I was at a red light texting, which is terrible. And, uh, and that is how I get my business. Um, we're a personal injury law firm. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're injured at work, if you're injured in a vehicle, if you're injured in a motorcycle or a boat or on a construction site uh, or in a hospital, um, you know, we handle those types of claims. Every consultation is free. So, you know, we like to tell you that we want to decide whether you have a case. Don't decide on your own that you don't have a case. Uh, you may very well be overlooking something. You may think you have a great case and you probably don't. And we'll let you know that too. But uh, we'll bring you into the office. We'll sit you down. We'll learn everything about you. Uh, and then we'll form a strategy together. Um, and Hold the and shirt up so it. they know how to find you. Oh, yeah. Where's my – look. <laughs> Just it's waiting for you uh, when we get our crab cake. But Blondell Miller and Schuler up front, and if you check our website, damngoodlawyer.com, right there on the back, this is the first series of shirts to include the website. So we're pretty excited Should about. Should I wear that. that backwards, like a priest? Uh yeah, you wear that backwards so everybody can see. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I, I put the beach back uh, behind me here to get you in the right mood because I know that's your next trip. I'm ready. This will be the next fun thing I do. The next fun thing I'll do will be laying on a beach somewhere where hopefully it's 80 plus degrees and I'll have a beverage. And you know what? For now, that'll be good enough. But just on the day when I'm going to get my global thing, let me dream of Paris for one moment. Dream, dream of, of the Northern Lights. Very good even if it's not going to be warm there. All right, he's Todd Schuler, damn good lawyer, and, of course, Blondell Miller Schuler. You can find them in Essex. Uh, you can find a lot of our friends, including Pizza John's and Crab Cakes and Pizza and Meat Lovers and a pretty decent manicotti as well, I might add, at Pizza John's. We are WNSD.net, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore, and we never make Todd Schuler stop talking about food and beaches and fun. And Baltimore Positive.